guys, it's Saturday. Uh, normally Sunday is when we do a lot of our filming. Um, and this week we have on the schedule to hopefully set this car in four wheels. I've been, been talking about it and really excited to do it. And Mike and I had talked and we were going to do it on Sunday, but I'm impatient. I ditched everything I was supposed to do today. And I'm going to put this damn thing on some wheels today by myself. Um, I'm going to have to scratch drop for some parts, cut it off the table. We still have a fixture in the back uh, to the table, so I had to cut some of those tack bugs loose. And then I'm going to use the hoist, I think, and lift this whole mess up in one shot and slowly set it down on some, uh, some suspension. So uh, let's see what happens. All right, so let's take a take a walk over to my drum and spindle and brake part section where I store a lot of my parts. Um, I tried to get a little more organized earlier this uh, winter and get all my brake parts in this big wooden crate here. Um, so I got everything kind of separated: front and rear, Rocky Mountains, um, wide fives in the back. And I got a handful of extra spindles. My collection is dwindling between selling and uh, trading to friends and stuff like that. So I got a pair. Let's see what we got here. So I'm looking for square backs. Um, this is a good square back. It's got bushings in it. So for our mock up right now, this should be great. Um, I'll put new bushings in before the car's you know ready for the road. But for us to do a mock up, this should be good um, to get hooked up. And it's uh, this is like the the later uh, not later 40s but the later style. It's not round back. Um, so got one of those, and these are just some spare spindle parts off of something. Uh, so this is a round back. Here you see that came on the earlier earlier cars. They can be used, uh, but obviously just want to have a matching set. Um, so. I think I only have maybe one of these kicking around. I usually use the square back stuff, just it's what I have a lot of. So there's another good one. So that's square back. It's got a nut on it. Let's check the, the uh, bushings here. So it looks like it has a bushing in the top, and there is indeed a bushing in the bottom. So, and it's still greasy. <laughs> so it's not rusty or pitted so this one will work pretty well we'll throw this round back back in there so drums um, if you guys remember I'm using wide 5 on this car uh, so I'm looking for a set of wide 5 front drums here and I got a crap ton of them actually <laughs> I bought a bunch of stuff uh, earlier this year and I got a bunch of wide five so just gotta make sure we gotta make sure that the snout is the same uh, I forget the years but there's like one year that has a longer snout on it um, so you want to make sure that they match obviously so these have the ribs in them and there's a actually I think those are two different snouts so it looks like, I mean, ignore the grease cap there, but the red one on the left there, I believe, has the longer snout on it than the yellow one. So I want to try and find a match to one of those. Uh, and that one looks to be really long, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm seeing things. Here's another red 
front drum. These all kind of came from the same estate. So I just gotta, I gotta dig in here, find a good pair of front drums uh, that will allow us to bolt it on. I have a bunch of backing plate stuff that goes way down. Some of these on the top are mechanical. Um, actually, that whole stack there is all backing plates. It goes down you know, to the bottom of that. So, so yeah, I'm going to keep digging. Uh, like I said, I got a bunch of backing plates there. We're going to ignore those for now just for doing the mock-up. I don't uh, need them necessarily right this second. I just want to get the, the thing on wheels. So let me dig here. I'll find a set of drums, front drums that match, and we'll uh, get the front ends slid together here in a second.
Mike, I know I did all the fun work yesterday. Yeah, Matt and I have been talking for the last week how we were excited about putting it on wheels and tires. And I get a text message from him yesterday that says, don't be mad at me, dot, 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 dot. And then a photo of this sitting on suspension. So Matt, being the typical impatient person he is, left to his own devices, actually uh, came out here and did a bunch of stuff, which is cool. It looks awesome. Yeah, I, I, I fought, I mean, there's some shots earlier. I actually fought a lot with all my spare parts I have for the front axle because I thought I had match spindles and I didn't. I had to swap around kingpins just to get this thing rolling. So honestly, it was in the end, it was pretty good because we didn't waste half a Sunday or three quarters of a Sunday with me just trying to get the bearings and the spindles and all of that. You'll have fun looking through that. Oh, God. Swearing and, and whatever. But I got it together. It's temporary. It's just, I actually have a Model A spindle in the front left and a 42 to 48 ish, or 41 to 48 uh, passenger front spindle. But it's together. It's getting us sitting right, which is good. Um, you know, the height, the stance of it's pretty good. Um, Mike and I were discussing the front tires. They're, they're back in the era that we're building the car. A lot of the cars had basically all same tire size around. Um, I don't love the look of it with how the car is sitting, so I think we need to drop the front tire size maybe one or two sizes. What that will also do is drop the car like maybe two inches or so just with the rubber rake, and that will get us sitting kind of how we want, so we're going to have to maybe spend some of that little bit of profit we have. We'll probably have to blow that on tires, but I think we were at 200 something. Yeah, we were around $200 profit, which still will cover front tires and it'll it'll save us from cutting a front cross member and doing a bunch of extra work. I'd rather spend $200 and get the brake tires that we want from the front to lower it down. Smaller tires also help steer a little easier down the road, so. It'll look, it'll look cooler. That's, yeah. that's all I care about. No, <laughs> no it'll, it'll look more proportional, I think, which is key. Right now it's kind of, we're, we're my big thing with building a T like this is you're fighting everybody thinking it's a T bucket or it's a trad, you know, traditional, what they call the fad T's or, um, they, they look, I'm not into them, they don't look that great. And we're trying to build a pre-war, war era race car, so the proportions have to be right, and we don't want big tires that are all, you know, it looks like a, a rat rod or something. That's Matt's trigger word. I know, I start twitching. But, uh, so yeah, the car's good. We're gonna, we're gonna work on getting uh, maybe some engine mounts made. Uh, this is a big step, because now we can start moving and working on getting other things built, set up steering, you know, whatever else, and we can sit here and hang out. We can sit here and drink our morning coffee. Yeah. And dream and think. <laughs> so that's all we got for this one. Um, we'll work on some other ones and as always we, uh, we do Tuesdays on the free tea, Fridays on the Sweetheart Roadster. I've got to get on that again soon. I've been slacking working on this thing all the time. He's been distracted. <laughs> so uh, yeah, as always, you know, make sure you subscribe and uh, share with your friends. Appreciate it. Thanks guys.